Roger Federer's retirement hit us like a truck. It was one of those landmark moments in sports history, not just tennis, because we'll never see anyone like him again. And we all know about the achievements and the fabulous moments that his Wilson won produced, but there were also some bitter lows. In today's video, we'll look at the five worst defeats of Federer's career and his greatest foes, starting with number five against Rafael Nadal in the 2008 Roland Garros final. There are many ways of ranking what could be Federer's worst loss and we've decided to have a bit of everything to cover all bases. The first on the list is Roland Garros' final defeat to Rafael Nadal in 2008, when he simply did not know how to play Nadal on Philippe Chatier. Not that he never got the hang of it, by the way. The first set went by in a flash, with Federer only winning one game, and while he put up a bit of a fight in the second, he'd still only won a total of four games and two sets of tennis. That certainly wouldn't improve for Federer, as he was dominated in the third by Nadal, who took home the trophy, the bagel, and an extremely embarrassing scoreline of 6-1, 6-3, 6-0 against his biggest rival. After that, at number four, against Juan Martin del Potro in the 2009 US Open Final. Seeing Federer dominate the 2000s, it would take an incredible story writer to describe how FedEx's 2009 went. It started with the defeat of Nadal at the Australian Open before getting married to his girlfriend of many years, his first and only Roland Garros title, a return to the Wimbledon honor board, and the birth of his twin daughters, and defeat in the US Open final to a hard-hitting Argentine, Juan Martin del Potro. But the defeat stings Federer a lot. He'll probably look back at it and picture it going in his way if he hadn't lost his cool. Del Potro got under Federer's skin, and the Swiss struggled to deal with his forehand, especially losing in five when he was only two points away from victory in the fourth. Up next at number three, against Novak Djokovic in the 2011 US Open Final. This defeat was the first time we saw the truly catty side of Federer in defeat. For someone genuinely gracious in defeat, it was a shock that he lost his cool, which ultimately cost him the match. There's something about Djokovic that doesn't help Federer when he's got match points on championship points. Only a year after blowing two match points in a semi-final against Djokovic, Federer did it again in much more spectacular fashion. After playing a fantastic game of tennis and completely outplaying Djokovic, all Federer had to do was provide the finishing touches to the match. He was 5-3, 40-15 up when he hit a wide serve which Djokovic hit back, almost recklessly, and it turned out to be the winner. It rattled Federer so badly that he lost the next point and wouldn't win another game losing the match to a rejuvenated Djokovic. At number two, against Rafael Nadal in the 2008 Wimbledon final. This is considered the greatest tennis match and we don't disagree. It shouldn't rank on this list because it was a display of tennis of the highest level from both players, but it's here because Federer himself rates it as the most heartbreaking defeat of his career. Everyone knows the story, but people sometimes forget that Nadal had already handed Federer an insane loss at the French Open final, where the number one only won four games. Now, when it was Federer's turn to take revenge, Nadal had already zipped through to a two-set lead, and given all the rain interruptions and delays, the fans were treated to a delight. Federer did extremely well to come back into the match and, after playing, considered the greatest tiebreak of all time, he forced the fifth set. We understand why it's the worst loss for him, because he had won from that point. It would have been the greatest win of his career, too. Rafa, though, edged the fifth set, winning 9-7 and becoming a first-time Wimbledon champion, stopping Federer from winning six Wimbledon titles in a row. Finally, at number one, against Novak Djokovic in the 2019 Wimbledon final. The fact that Federer chose the 2008 Wimbledon final over this heartbreak, even though this is more recent, indicates that he's still not over it. Hell, we're still not over it. A 37-year-old Federer shouldn't have to be fighting for a ninth Wimbledon title, but he was, and he almost won it too. For what it's worth, Federer was incredible throughout, and if he'd only played the tie breaks a little better, he would have wrapped up the match much sooner. By the time it reached the fifth set, Djokovic was only holding on due to his sheer mental fortitude. Federer got the break and had two championship points. The rest, as they say, is something we don't speak about. 
out. Now, let's look at Federer's greatest foes. Throughout his spectacular career, Roger also came up against some fantastic players who became his rivals. Because his career spans over two decades, he had quite a few foes in the sport. Here are five of his greatest rivals. Making the top five, Leighton Hewitt. The first rival of Federer's career was not Rafael Nadal. It was Leighton Hewitt. Both of the players were the same age when they arrived, and Hewitt was considered a better player. It wasn't a surprise when he raced to a 7-2 head-to-head -head record over Federer in the first nine games. Unfortunately for Hewitt, 2004 was the turning point of Federer's career, and he realized what he needed to do against the Australian. He would go on to win the next 15 consecutive meetings, and the rivalry was hardly a rivalry anymore. It also included a Grand Slam final, the US Open in 2004, which went the way of a dominant FedEx. Hewitt can find solace because he won their last meeting and two of their last three, both coming in the ATP Finals. Coming in at number four, Juan Martin Del Potro. Few players have caused as many problems for Federer as Del Potro did throughout his career. While Federer ended the rivalry with a lopsided 18-7 record against the Argentine, we're sure the seven losses hurt Federer quite. Del Potro's first win against the Swiss Maestro came in the US Open Final and ranked among one of the worst defeats of Federer's career, he would also defeat Federer in his hometown of Basel, twice, in the final, in 2012 and 2013, and record another win in the US Open quarterfinal of 2017, which Federer hated losing, into the top three, Andy Murray. This rivalry is way closer than people give it the credit it deserves. That's mainly because Murray's six years younger than Federer, but that didn't stop him from defeating Federer a total of six times in the 2000s when the Swiss Maestro was practically impossible to defeat. It also includes a win over Federer in 2006 when Federer only lost five games and had a 92-5 record. If not for Roger going on that five-match win streak in their final five matches, Murray would have had a better head-to-head -head record over Federer. Of course, though, Federer also has the edge over Murray in their Grand Slam battles, which includes two wins in Wimbledon, one in the final in 2012. Then at number two, Novak Djokovic. Only Djokovic and Nadal have faced each other more than Federer and Nadal in the last few decades. A six-year gap between the two players and Federer still retired with a respectable 23-27 record in favor of Djokovic is extremely impressive. Djokovic won six of their last seven meetings stat padding to improve the record, but it also included that heartbreaking loss in Wimbledon 2019. Federer had a better head-to-head -head for most of their careers, but Djokovic edged ahead in the final few battles, even though the Swiss maestro defeated Djokovic comfortably in the ATP Finals in 2019. Lastly, at number one, Rafael Nadal. It's almost unfair to call Nadal Federer's foe. Can he be a foe if your biggest rival ditches some major family commitments to give you an amazing final hurrah? We don't think so. But statistically, it's a rivalry. The duo met 40 times, with Nadal leading the head-to-head -head by a staggering 24 to 16. While he gets the due credit for doing that, it's worth noting that 14 of those 24 victories came on clay courts. The pair only met four times on grass, with Federer leading the head-to-head 3-1 -head and 11-9 on hard courts. It shows how Federer was probably a better player on both grass and hard courts, but Rafa's clay domination meant that the head-to-head -head record went in his favor. That's a wrap for this video. Do you agree with our picks of Federer's worst defeats, or is there one that should have made the list ahead of these? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.